So recently I've been fiddling around with the GNOME desktop environment because of the latest release of Ubuntu 20.04. So I decided to take a look at Manjaro's GNOME edition and see how they implement the uh, desktop environment in comparison to Ubuntu. So uh, I have used Manjaro before. In fact, it was my main distro of choice for about just over a year, I'd say. Um, but until recently I switched to uh, KDE Neon and I have used the uh, KDE edition for Manjaro, but I have not used the GNOME edition. So um, keep in mind, this is also not a, on a virtual machine, so the uh, performance is also going to be a bit smoother. Um, but anyway, this is what you first get when you get to the system, and I've also not installed it. This is on a live CD. So you get this uh, documentation tab here, support, project, you have all the things you would need if you're a beginner. And I used to use the forums in the beginning when I first started using Manjaro and it was one of the most helpful forums that I've used. Um, and there's also the social media here and tons of language support. Um, so if you're a beginner who wants to try out Manjaro, well, it's definitely a good choice as a, as a distribution. And if you don't want it to keep bugging you, then you could just disable it really easily. So taking a look at the desktop here, um, comparing it to Ubuntu 20.04, there's definitely some differences. Uh, the most notable being the dock. Uh, in my previous video, I talked about how I believe the dock was a bit too big. It was about 44, maybe 46 pixels. Uh, this one's just the right size, in my opinion, especially for uh, lower resolution, like my laptop screen here. And instead of uh, spanning from the top to bottom, this one is kind of centered. Um, but unfortunately, it doesn't really offer any settings or options to change that. Um, but again, I think that the defaults are good enough. Uh, when it comes to the shell, um, I was also talking about in my previous video how GNOME is kind of oversized. I think that this is even more oversized than uh, the GNOME. Uh, notification center although re the right click menu is a lot more compact and for the default theme of course we have this kind of greenish type color uh, that um, Manjaro has uh, by default and there's I don't know if you can really see that on video but there's um it's kind of transparent here so you can see the background um, overall I really like the way Manjaro themes it's um, desktops and um, for the default wallpaper we have this and if we look at all the other ones it has a much bigger collection of images in comparison to this one looks pretty pretty cool uh, in comparison to Ubuntu so as you can see there's a ton of images that you can choose from I'm just gonna go with this one So that's that when it comes to the just first appearance, uh, initial look uh, when you see the desktop. Um, now when it comes to the terminal, I want to mention one thing is by default it's not this color and that's one of my few gripes that I have with um, just the default settings and um, it has the colors from the system th theme enabled. Um, this is not correct because I did kind of mess with the settings a little bit. Um, but one thing that's really nice about this terminal is if you type something up, it uh, shows you some suggestive um, uh, commands, I suppose, that, that you typed in the past. And as you can see, uh, it's in this uh, gray color. Now, I did switch to a black background, and it's a lot easier to read. It's a lot more visible. But by default, the background itself was gray. So it was pretty hard to read what this text was. So I think that... Um, they should definitely change the defaults for the terminal to maybe a black background or something else. Um, but an another thing that's really cool is that when you type up these commands, um, it highlights the commands in green. So let's say if you make a typo, it becomes red and the suggestions go away. Whereas if you type it up correctly, it's highlighted in green, showing you that it's a correct command. So this is pretty nice. Uh, same thing for screen fetch here. Let's also let that run. And it's also using Z ZSH as its shell. And let's clear that up. If we try to look for NeoFetch, it's red because I don't have it installed. So I think that that's really cool. Uh, this is um, 
very nice uh, for a terminal implementation by default. So I really like that. Um, another thing that I prefer uh, for Manjaro um, over Ubuntu, for example, is the software. Uh, the package manager PAMEC is a lot better, in my opinion, than uh, the software center because it has basically everything you need. And of course, if you want to enable AUR support, you just go to preferences, type up your password, um, and then go to AUR, and then you can just, with the click of a button, enable or disable it, and that gives you access to a ton of other packages. And if you don't want to use that, you always have Snap support, Flatpak, um, app images, and so on. So I think it's uh, definitely nice, and it's got different browsers as well. Um, so I think that the defaults, um, whatever it has to offer in its repository, is what most people would need. Or at least if you're a beginner or someone who doesn't really need a lot of software, it's definitely going to uh, satisfy your needs. Now, when it comes to the default applications, um, it looks very simple at first glance, and I really like that because they made use of categorizing things. As you can see, there's a, a lot more here. One thing that was on by default is this caffeine thing, and it has to do, it has something to do with screensavers. I was wondering what it is myself. Uh, it prevents the activation of both the screensaver and the sleep power saving mode. Uh, it's a bit specific. It was here by default. It was not enabled, but I just exited out of it. Um, I don't really understand the purpose of it, but um, apart from that, everything that's installed, it has the essentials. You have Firefox as your web browser, Lollipop for the music player. I've heard a lot of good stuff about this. I've never really used it myself, um, but a lot of people like it as a music player. When it comes to the videos, just got the standard video player here. Just basically, again, all the essentials. Image viewer, there's uh, the document viewer, calendar application. Um, there's also Steam for anyone wanting to just play games. And then for the accessories here, we have calculator, um, of course, your file manager, screenshot tool, um, text editor, but one thing that's nice is that it comes with tweaks by default. So even though uh, you don't have those, I guess, extra settings that Ubuntu does, you do have GNOME tweaks by default. And I think that this is very nice, especially for beginners, um, because there's also here in the appearance tab, there's a ton of various applications here, or I mean, themes that are installed by default and you could just easily apply them without having to go ahead and uh, install your own uh, different themes from the internet. So I really like that, and I do think that uh, as default themes, they look pretty elegant as well. So it's very nice that they have uh, GNOME tweaks by default. I really like that. Um, it does have a lot of interesting choices, though. I mean, it, it has this trackpad gesture thing. Uh, if you're using a computer, a desktop, it's not really applicable. Also, this dynamic wallpaper thing. It is nice to have dynamic wallpapers, but I don't see the point of it. It seems a bit too specific. I never understood what this software token is, but it apparently seems to be on by default. And one thing that really, actually two things, I just noticed there's also the quantum manager. I don't understand. Oh, actually, I do see why it's installed. So when it comes to Linux desktops, uh, there's often inconsistencies between Qt applications, GDK applications. And I just realized that having this and having a Qt application, if you want to test it out, look at how many options you have. If you want it to match um, your GDK applications, then this is installed by default and it's really easy to use. You just select whatever theme you want. You click on use this theme and you're good to go. After that, you have uh, your various settings if you want to uh, mess around with, of course, but um, installing and using them is very easy if, if you haven't uh, used that before. So this is basically like the GNOME tweaks, but for KDE applications, basically. So that was interesting. I didn't expect that. Um, 
But one thing I definitely didn't expect is this layout switcher. Now you have uh, your settings here and you can access your various tools they decided to include, such as the gestures that, that I mentioned earlier as well. And then you have basically six different types of layouts. Now, I tried doing this um, just a couple minutes ago, but I think it stopped my recording for some reason It reset OBS, so I'm not gonna click on them. But as you can see the layouts here, it has like a Zorin OS type of implementation. And so you have something like uh, KD slash Windows type look with the taskbar at the bottom and uh, I believe the arc menu. Then you have Unity, which is nice. Um, and I tested it out and it does give you a global menu here and also the title bar buttons go on the top left. That's very nice. Uh, this one's kind of like a Mac OS type with a dock on the bottom panel at the top. This one is like your standard GNOME, I suppose. And then you have a Mate type um, desktop layout. Again, if only I could show you, but um, I'm pretty sure it's going to stop my recording again. So I'm not going to do that, but this is definitely a very unique, polished, um, and overall, I would say better implementation of, of GNOME as opposed to, um, as opposed to Ubuntu. So let's take a look at the system monitor, which is interesting. So I want to take a look at that really quick. And this is using, hmm, that, that's really interesting because, uh, just like yesterday's video, I made a video on Ubuntu 20.04 and it was using two gigabytes of RAM, basically on idle. I mean, all I have is OBS, uh, running right now. Um, but it's using just under two gigabytes. But again, um, I'm sure if I install the system, and if I don't have OBS running and I have everything set up properly, this should be hovering at just below a gigabyte or so. Um, but yeah, so I'd say that's about it for now. Um, don't know what else there could be to to look at further, but um, yeah, you know, I think that um, I would say that this is a very nice implementation of GNOME, and I do personally prefer it over Ubuntu 20.04 and uh, you know if I were to recommend one or the other to a beginner I would recommend both I think both are good um, but if I were to have to choose one over the other I would choose this one so that was basically it um, if you have any comments or anything make sure to comment if you liked the video make sure to like and subscribe and that's basically it for this video thanks for watching